<laughs> I bet you didn't know the Jazz Club was a palace, huh? Hey guys, Badger Knight here, and today we're doing something a little bit more different and interesting and a little bit creative as well. Now, there's a few things in my life that I really, really enjoy partaking in. Uh, nerd shit, video games, and, well, booze. Combine all those three things together, you get something, well, like this video. Today we're gonna to be making some Persona 5 themed cocktails, and I have my own list of recipes that we're gonna go ahead and run through throughout the duration of this video. And also, if you guys wanna try a specific drink, uh, there's gonna be chapters down here in the uh, description, and you can just sort of tab through, make sure what you find interesting. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and make cocktails themes around the characters and palaces of Persona 5. Of course, one of my favorite parts of Persona 5 Royal is the Jazz Cafe. And, uh, you know, going in there, um, you know, it's a nice, nice atmosphere and everything. It's a really, really good addition to Royal. I thought it would be interesting to go ahead and sort of take that aesthetic and then apply it to this video and make uh, cocktails that are themes around the Phantom Thieves and the various palace rulers that they do battle with in Persona 5 Royal. Now, this isn't exactly the first time I've done a deviation from uh, my normal standard affair of content, which... For those of you who are familiar with me and the content that I do put up on this channel, I have a series on this channel called Dichotomy of a Character, of which I'm currently doing a run-through of five of my favorite Persona 5 characters, that being of uh, Onza Kamiki, Ryuji Sakamoto, Makoto Nijima, and Sumi uh, Yoshizawa, and Goro Akechi. I'm actually in the middle of uh, producing and making uh, the episode where we're gonna go ahead and cover Makoto. The On and Ryuji videos I've already uploaded, so again, you guys can go check that out on the channel. Links will be in the description down below if you're interested. Akechi uh, and uh, Kasumi videos are coming as well. As soon as I finish the Makoto one, I'm gonna either work on one or the other. I'm not really sure which one I'm going to put in for the season finale of season two of the Economy of Character where we're exclusively focusing on Persona 5, but We'll get, to run, we'll get around to that eventually. This is going to be the second episode of what I guess I'm gonna call the economy of a cocktail. I actually did a whole entire video themed around the last season where I almost exclusively covered the characters of Mass Effect. The link to that video will be in the description if you guys want to check this out. It's gonna be done in the same style as this video, only instead of making cocktails that are themed around the characters and uh, antagonists of Persona 5, we make some around the characters of Mass Effect. One comment that, from that video has always stuck in my mind is that um, I didn't really have any proper spirits to make the drinks that I really wanted to, to make uh, to fully fulfill the recipes that you know I have that I wanted to make for that video. But now we do. I actually have some proper spirits and more behind the bar as we'll get to in just a second. Without further ado, let's get started. I'm Badger Knight and this is Persona 5 themed cocktails. Let's get started. All right, so the first drink that we got here is modeled after Joker. Uh, this is obviously has to be a coffee drink, right? Because, you know, Joker stays in the attic of a blonde, Sojuro's coffee shop, has been since he moved to Tokyo, and doing otherwise would just be a disservice to, well, Persona 5, and I think Joker in general. We're gonna make something befitting of Persona 5's protagonist, and we're actually gonna go ahead and call the drink the protagonist. You're gonna need two ounces of strong espresso, uh, one ounce of Kahlua, one ounce creme de cacao, Brandy and heavy cream. I brewed a little bit of, of uh, espresso a little bit earlier today before I um, shot this video and uh, we're gonna go ahead and just put two ounces of here into our shaker. Oh, that's spillage, wonderful. And then one ounce of Kahlua. Crack that open. One ounce of dark creme de cacao. I got some uh, just Mr. Stacks here, nothing too fancy. And then, of course, just to spice things up here, we're gonna use uh, some EJ Brandy. And then we're also just gonna use a little bit of half and half cream here. Uh, now, ideally you would use heavy cream, but I didn't have that on hand. And, well, this is supposed to be a coffee drink, so why the hell not? We're gonna put in, say, half an ounce. Just dump that in there. And then we're gonna top with ice. We're gonna shake and strain into a martini glass. Ah, let's give it a whiff. Yeah, surprise, surprise, it smells like coffee. Oh, you can smell the brandy in there too, ooh. Mm. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. One protagonist. This should be fairly good. Um, I mean, it's just, it's just coffee, Kahlua, just a little bit of, of uh, warmness with the brandy. But uh, yeah, let's pull this thing off and then see how we do. Oh, 
Oh, that's like a, that's like a, a, a cold, yet yeah, it's a very lovely drink. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm putting that on for the Christmas list. This is exactly how I think walking into LeBlanc after, you know, uh, traversing the, the metaverse, be it Mementos or a palace or really just doing anything in Persona 5. It's how you should, how you feel when you walk back into LeBlanc in the evening. It's a warm, welcoming hug that's like sweet and chocolatey and just, oh, it's so nice. Mm. But yeah, what, what really, really sells it here for me is the, um, uh, it's, it's like, it, it, it's, it's a very, very simple drink, but it's also kind of complex at the same time. Like, you get the, um, you get the, the, the warmth of the brandy hits you first, and then you taste the chocolate, and then the Kahlua, and then you get the punch of the espresso beans, and you get a little bit of the, of the half and half cream in there as well. Dude, you could make like a, a like a, a, a milkshake out of this. If you could have this like frozen. Oh, that, that would be ideal, I think. That would be really good you know i wonder how many of these drinks i'm actually going to be like really palatable because we're, we're going to get really really weird a little bit a little bit later in this video but you know i figure start start off with something nice and simple right kind of like joker's false persona that yeah uh, that he's kind of forced to adopt right you know high both face and mind right you're not the leader of the phantom thieves you're 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 some schmuck with a, a, a bullshit criminal record because uh damn sue a brat man uh, messiah Sushido. i get the protagonist of my mustache <laughs> If there wasn't any more drinks to cover, I'd absolutely have another. <laughs> but that's that's it, I think, for uh, for this sort of combination here. Yeah. So that was the protagonist, man. Oh, I think that's that's like ten out of ten. That's that's gonna be that's gonna be tough to beat as we go on. But uh, anyway, on to the next drink. <laughs> next drink is gonna be themed around Persona 5's best girl, and those who disagree can die mad about it. We're gonna be making a drink around Persona 5's Anzakamaki. Due to the amount of coverage my video, my long ass video essay about Anzakamaki got, I think it's safe to say that, um, well, she is one of my favorite characters in Persona 5. She has this ability to just wear her heart in her sleeve, whereas most, I guess, Western protagonists, uh, especially female protagonists, don't really do that because, well, patriarchy bottom text. And it's also really funny how that happens because On's character arc is about critiquing patriarchy. Well, if you want more details about my thoughts on that, uh, check the link down in the description below for a link to that particular video where I do cover On. I have a lot to say about her, obviously, so I'm not going to repeat myself there because, well, there's a couple hours there for you of, of content of why I think she's so awesome. But uh, anyway, we're going to make a drink modeled after On's comedy. Now, I thought about this uh, a couple different ways, right? Uh, on is the... Well, magical specialist of the team. She also has one of the most powerful um, AOE spells in the game. And also on the side, she gets, there's a random chance that she can use this ability called Sexy Technique that will immediately cancel the action of an opponent, which is great. I love that. I, I thought about making a cocktail uh, themed around her um, affinity for fire, which would just be like, say, Fireball Whiskey or like, uh, or Goldschlager or maybe something with like um, some Tabasco sauce or something, which... I'd have to use tequila or something. And then, you know, I went into like the, the, um, the uh, specifics about On's heritage, um, which the game mentions that On is um, either one quarter American or a quarter Japanese. And a, a key part of On's character arc here is not only patriarchy, but also critiquing uh, the sort of xenophobic tendencies that Japanese society has towards people who don't look traditionally Japanese, right? On his blonde hair and blue eyes. She's going to stick out everywhere that she goes, despite the fact that she is ethnically Japanese, and, well, deeply so. Now, the one-quarter American thing could mean fucking anything, but um, during her confidant arc, On mentions that she spent some time in Finland um, with her family, because her family is indeed uh, part of the modeling industry. They're constantly trotting around the globe, right? So we're going to go ahead and try and reflect On's flashy looks here and her heritage with this drink, uh, which we're going to use... Um, uh, Koskin um, Korva Vodka. This is Finnish vodka with some, um, some straight Japanese sake and some uh, chocolate liqueur, which we we'll use for the last drink involving Joker. And we're going to use some uh, Jacqueline's apricot brandy. Now, the reason why we're using this apricot brandy here is that On's um, first name, well, On, actually translates to, I think in hiragana, meaning apricot. So we have the Finnish vodka, uh, the alcohol that is basically her namesake, and uh, we're also going to reflect on's uh, massive sweet tooth because the first thing that she says 
when uh, you go to the hotel after you after the Phantom Thieves uh, defeat Kamoshida is I have to eat my way through the entire dessert menu. And uh, she also has this latent love of dessert, uh, dessert foods, cakes, and uh, especially crepes too, which is uh, fairly odd. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and incorporate all of this into a single drink here. This drink's just gonna be called, nice and simple, it's just gonna be called the Panther. Because well, An's code name is Panther, and it kind of fits a little bit, doesn't it? Anyway, let's get started here. So what you're gonna need, you're gonna fill the shaker with ice. We're also gonna add one ounce of um, Motoboshi's sake. Not sake, for all you um, <laughs> people who don't understand, including my uncle who doesn't understand that you don't say sake, it's sake. And then one ounce of our Kusinkova Vinya. So the thing is about this, this vodka that makes it uh, unique from say, the one I have up here, the, the big giant thing, or like Tito's or anything else, is that uh, this is actually made with barley instead of, uh, well, potatoes or anything else that they use to ferment vodka. It does still smell like vodka. It, it still smells a lot like rubbing alcohol, but yeah, so <laughs> do that of what you will. And then just an ounce of, um, so we're just putting in uh, one ounce of all these ingredients, by the way, if that wasn't clear. Now, what you could do instead here is actually use like apricot liqueur, um, but I didn't have any on hand, nor could I find any in my local liquor store. So um, this was the next best thing that I could find. If you guys happen to have that, then you know, go ahead, of course, and because, you know, on is a massive sweet tooth, we're going to go ahead and just dump all of the chocolate core in there. Top it all off and shake well. There you go. Ooh, we got a nice sort of... It looks, it looks a lot like the brandy, actually. And I got to be careful with this because uh, I ain't so good at handling martini glasses right now. Mmm. Oh, that is, mmm. That is such a unique flavor. I gotta go in for a run too. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Huh. Wow. I'm, I'm actually just speechless. I don't know what to make of that. That's, it's delicious, but, oh man. Okay, so, I just, I, I gotta, I gotta do it again. I have no idea what the fuck's going on because as soon as it hits my lips, I don't know what to make of it. So, the apricot comes first, and then the chocolate comes second after that. And then I think I taste the little the, the rice of the sake, and then I taste the Korsenkova. It's so good. And you, you feel the notes of the chocolate as well. Oh my god. I gotta eat my way through the entire dessert menu, bro. <laughs> I don't know what to say. That This is great! Um, I, it's speechless. It's so unique. You got the, the chocolate mingling with the, uh, you got the, the Mr. Stacks liqueur here, uh, the creme de cow mingling with the, the, the sweet rice flavor of the sake, and then you have the, the brandy here, and then just a little, little bite of the, of the vodka here, the course in Kova. And it's just, it's so unique and so delicious. Mm. Oh man, that is good. It's also, it's, it's, it's got, it's, it's got a bit of a bite to it, actually. The APV on this is probably really high. So, I mean, I put equal parts sake, vodka. This is something that I guess you would just sip on. This would be a very, very nice appetite cleaner, right? Uh, say you somehow uh, come into a large sum of money after selling off a uh, former Olympian's fake gold medal and you want to go to a uh, large buffet uh, with all your friends for whatever reason. This would be the place to do it. That would be something you drink after you gorge yourself on all the cake. All right, so I'm just gonna finish this off camera because it is that good, and uh, we're gonna move on to the next drink. You're gonna need to eat my way through the entire dessert menu. Don't come back. All right, so our next drink here is gonna be themed after Persona 5's best boy, Ryuji Sakamoto. Of course, I did a video on Ryuji as well, following the episode where we did go ahead and cover on in extreme detail. I gave Ryuji the same treatment on this YouTube channel as well. So of course, links in the description if you guys wanna go check that out. Um, there's not really much to say about Ryuji that I haven't really said on this channel already, other than he is the bestest bro and that Atlas continues to do him dirty for no reason other than for cheap laughs, which is really just lame and stupid and I hate it. Ryuji is best boy because, well, when you get down to it, the reason for him doing all of his actions or taking all the actions that he does um, and he takes within the plot of the game is to not to disappoint his mom, which very reasonable given his background as well. And uh, speaking of that, Persona 5 makes it clear that Ryuji's family has had a troubled uh, history with alcohol. So 
I imagine that sometime in the distant future when the Phantom Thieves uh, as a group go just go to Shinjuku to just go to Izakaya and just drink, Ryuji is going to be the guy to bring everyone home safe because uh, uh, in his Kanban arc he recommend or he says that uh, his dad was a violent abusive drunkard who eventually just left the family entirely, just abandoned his wife and his, and his son uh, after coming home after every single drunken bender and then just beating the living shit out of them, like physically abusing them, which makes Kamashita's abuse of Ryuji just sting that much more. Uh, because it's also implied that Kamashita knew of Ryuji's extensive home life and uh, uh, abuse of home life as well, and then just chose to proliferate rumors, which I, I think actually just makes him like an even worse piece of shit than you know I can already imagine. On that as well, and Ryuji mentions during his confident arc that his mom has this sing uh, the signature special beverage consisting of uh, sliced lemons and honey, which she would use to restore his energy after, you know, sprinting and doing track meets and extensive athletic activity and the like. Now, this facet of uh, the strength's restorative properties actually does track because uh, lemons and honey do have a shitload of electrolytes um, when mixed together in a, a, a drink or like a, some kind of cocktail. I believe uh, there's another YouTube channel up there, which um, my, uh, the name of it forgets, uh, escapes me, but um, there was this drink in ancient Rome which consisted of like vinegar and honey and a bunch of limes, and it was supposed to be really, really refreshing. It was made for uh, Roman gladiators uh, who would just go fight in the arena, and then, you know, they just take five. It was the Gatorade of the era. But, yeah, so this this drink is just great for post-workout, uh, post-workout recovery, and it's a pleasant one, too, as well. Um, now, the only thing uh, Sakamoto-san is missing is, uh, like, a dash of sodium, or, like, a little bit of salt to make the drink this just that much more potent, um, which I'm just going to go ahead and just try and reflect that during the, with this drink here. So... Um, and uh, also because of Ryuji's uh, troubled history with alcohol and his family's troubled history with alcohol, we're actually going to make two different versions of uh, this cocktail um, that's supposed to re-energize you uh, after, you know, a period of extended exercise, like, you know, running track like Ryuji is, for example. So we're going to make a non-alcoholic one, which I'm going to call the Sprinter's Boost, and then we're going to mix in some alcohol for a different drink later. This one is actually just nice and simple, right? Um, and just with one caveat here, uh, this drink involves just lemon juice, uh, honey, and your soda or drink of choice here. Uh, and for this particular one, we're going to be using some ginger beer. Ideally, I would have used sparkling water, but I just don't have any on hand. And uh, given I'm an absolute fiend for Moscow Mules, I just have like shitloads of ginger beer just lying around and I needed, I needed a way to use it, to be honest. So what we're going to do here is just build this inside of the glass as opposed to just shaking it. Uh, because, well, Frankly, I don't want to clean honey out of my uh, out of all my cocktail things because you know we have a couple more to make here as part of the series. I did try this before I started filming this, and it was really really good when shaken. I wonder if it's just as good stirred. Uh, ideally, suspending the honey in the drink, I think would actually be a, a better idea than just uh, going ahead and doing that. So before we do anything, we're gonna put some ice in. There. Two ounces of lemon juice. We're going to also just put in uh, the same amount, so two ounces of, of honey, and we're just going to go ahead and just eyeball this. And we're going to use our lemon slice to garnish to sort of swirl up all the honey and everything else. And then we're just going to go ahead and just top it with some ginger beer, about the same amount. So we're going to fill up the rest of the glass with it. Okay, our lemon garnish here, and then just stir up everything. Now with this, as you can see, all the honey is just sort of stuck to the bottom. Actually, there's a better idea for this. So if you were to just shake this in like a normal cocktail, or just use the cocktail shakers for it, um, then the sort of, the honey is just still going to stick to the sides of the cocktail shaker, as I've seen, you know, I mentioned that I tried this off camera, but you're going to get a little bit of that honey inside the actual cocktail, right? It's still going to stick to the sides of this because it'll be colder. Honey will stick to the colder, uh, colder elements more than the, um, uh, room temperature glass that we have here. So that's just, that's just going to be par for the course. So we'll just set that aside for now. And here we go. One drink. Mmm. That is, that is refreshing. That is very, very good. Um, hmm. It's not as good if I chose to shake it, but again, for the sake of this video, I really can't because I don't have time to just scrape all the honey out of my cocktail shakers, but the version I tried where I do shake it is superior because we do get some of the honey that's just not sitting at the bottom of the glass all crystallized here. Yeah, that, that is refreshing. Um, which is very, very handy given that, well, frankly, the, the studio is very, very hot. I got all these lights on. I'm wearing black. But yeah, goddamn. If I was on a, if I was on a sprint and, you know, my parents were like, I brought yours, I brought this for you, heal up, get back at it. I would absolutely just run just for this drink. 
It's so refreshing. It's tart, but yet the spiciness of the ginger beer sort of levels it out. And you get a little bit of honey in there as well, of course. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can try and reach the bottom of the glass here, but. Oh, oh that's so refreshing. Oh man, all right. Well, all right. <laughs> that's, it's pretty self-explanatory there, guys. Um, it's, it's just a really, really refreshing post-workout drink uh, filled with electrolytes. You know, I might actually have um, more of these after I film because, you know what they say, more electrolytes, less likely to get a hangover. You just get more hydrated. So I'm going to have a couple more of these after I start downing effectively multiple cocktails just for this one video. So keep that in mind, I guess. It's a nice, refreshing drink. But uh, yeah, we're going to move on to the alcoholic version now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next alcoholic drink is going to be based around uh, Ryuji's final persona, which is William. One of my favorite aspects about William's design in the game is that, uh, you know, the, the, the last awakening the Phantom Thieves have before they fight Monarchy in the third semester, all the Phantom Thieves uh, personas start to kind of look like them, right? Ryuji is like the perfect example of this, right? Uh, William, uh, the persona, becomes exactly, almost I I identical to Ryuji, and I love that so much. It's such a cool design. The subtext of that is really obvious. It's so cool. I love it. But, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and just uh, clean up here, and then we're going to go ahead and move into making uh, what I'm going to call William's Fighting Spirit. So, let's get started, shall we? All right, so for this one, you're going to go ahead and fill a shaker with ice. Oh, my ice is starting to melt here. And then we're also going to add um, one ounce of our dark rum. One ounce of rum. Glug, 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 glug sound. So, of course, you know, pirate themed, you got to have some rum in there. Think tropical. Uh, I th I'm thinking some triple sec here. So, one more ounce of triple sec. And then we're also going to put in about an ounce of lemon juice as well. We're also going to add a little bit, an ounce of honey. Now, I think this is the last time we're actually going to use honey in this, in this video. So, we're going to go ahead and just use it to make, just to make this drink have a little bit more punch. We're gonna use about an ounce of that. And shake until it's well combined. And then we're going to strain it into just a regular normal glass. Let's see if it actually fits into a, a whiskey glass there. So let's shake. Oh, that is that smells really powerful. <laughs> oh, there's all the honey just sticking at the bottom. Nice. Just use the same old lemon slice for garnish. And there you go. We have the Williams Fighting Spirit. Let me just take a whiff of it real quick. Smell, definitely smell the rum. That is very, very up up in front there, front and center. Mm. I don't know about that. Mm. Like the, the, the first flavor you get is good because you just have all the combinations of, of the rum, the triple sec, um, the lemon juice, and uh, and that you get a little bit of honey in there as well, but the aftertaste isn't that great. And then, then you get all the alcohol there too. You get all the, the bite of, uh, of the triple sec and, and the rum as well. Not that great actually. Hmm. Compared to the, uh, the, the non-alcoholic version, that is, uh, that's, that's pretty shitty. It just, it just tastes of like watery lemon. Um, I, I need to change the portions around a little bit, I guess. Maybe, maybe just a little bit forward on the rum, I guess, uh, and then that would be pretty good. But otherwise, nah, this ain't it. Uh, this is the first first F we're going to put in the chat for this episode. William's Fighting Spirit, not that great. So I'm not going to spend any more time on that. Uh, I said what I have to say. So let's just move on to the next one. All right, moving right along here, we have our next drink here. We're going to model this one after Persona 5's Yusuke Kitagawa. Now, Yusuke is the Phantom Thieves resident weird and eccentric art kid. Uh, and for me and mostly everyone else that I've spoken to, um, Yusuke is a character that definitely grows on you over the course of the game. Which is a shame because uh, by the time you really start to warm up to him, or at least I have, um, in the manner that I did when I'm playing Persona 5, he's just off to, he's just relegated to comedic relief with Futaba, which is fine. It serves his character well, but... Um, all the serious stuff is sort of corded off to his confidant arc. I mean, uh, it's a shame too, because I think Yusuke's, uh, outfit, his Phantom Thieves outfit, is probably one of the best in the game, uh, because 
he rationalizes his own sense of rebellion against Madarame as this masterless samurai. He's depicted as an actual ronin on Heist with the Phantom Thieves, which I think is super cool. He's a ronin seeking to right the wrongs of his master, who is depicted as uh, some kind of shogun in the game. I love all these things about Yusuke's character design, but as it stands right now, we don't really get to interact with him as much as I would like to in Persona 5, which is a shame. Uh, I want to hang out with Yusuke a little bit more outside of his confident arc. Yusuke is also sort of lumped in together with Ryuji and Joker, even though um, it doesn't really get the whole me and the boys energy sort of thing. I mean, when Ryuji does the whole shenanigans in Hawaii and when uh, he drags Mishima, Yusuke, and Joker along to just try and pick up some, some women or whatever. I, I really wanted to feel that connection that I felt with uh, with Ryuji and like many of the other Phantom Thieves, which I never really got while playing. He attends a different high school than the rest of the, than most of the rest of the Phantom Thieves. That's a little bit weird. Uh, it's done to preserve the whole secrecy about around Madarame, which is kind of lame. It's, it's a fast and loose one that's not entirely offensive, but you know, when you start to think about it, it is kind of a little bit weird. What we are left with, though, is a fantastic story about the ethics of art. There's a certain hard line, I would guess, Yusuke and, by a certain extent, Madarame would take uh, when it concerns um, getting food on the table, selling your art to, like, conventions, and using your art as a means to acquire money and fame. Uh, how, how to exactly ethically profit off your works, right? What would be the extent to which one would pour into, you know, the, the amount of emotion one would pour into a canvas when you know that particular piece isn't really gonna have mass appeal at conventions and stuff, right? That is the entire point of Yusuke's Confident Arc, and it is a really, really good story. I enjoy it every single time that I do play Persona 5, but um, we're gonna go ahead and actually try and model that whole notion. Uh, Yusuke is a centrism. Uh, his uh, attitude towards the arts. So I'm going to take all that into account and try model a drink after that. Henceforth, this drink is going to be called the Goiman because Yusuke's persona is uh, Ishikawa Goiman, who was, uh, to put in over sim or overly simplified terms, a masterless samurai who was sort of the Robin Hood of feudal Japan. So you have that sort of through line to work with here. So what you're going to need here, you're just going to need to fill a shaker with ice. <laughs> When you think of like traditional Japanese flavors, right? You go, go to your like a, like an izakaya or like a, a Japanese restaurant, right? Um, or any sort of like Asian fusion restaurant, let's say. They serve you, you know, like say green tea, for example, some yuzu fruit. Rationalize this drink for Yusuke. I thought we'd just go ahead and fully send and make it a sort of uh, drink that sort of reflects traditional Japanese flavors, right? So sake, we have some green tea syrup, um, some lemon juice, and uh, even though it is out of season here, we have some lychee juice as well. Lychee juice is currently out of season. I would go ahead and just chop it up, maybe use some as a garnish, but it's currently, you know, the beginning of March as I'm cur currently filming this video and user fruits um, uh, when internationally exported are only like, they're a summer fruit and they're not available year round, at least here uh, in the States where I'm filming this. And if I wanted to like say import something or go to like a, um, you know, a, a, a fort or go to like a, a specialized supermarket that does carry them, it's like, a drive and they're super expensive and if I were to make a juice out of them I would need to basically buy like a whole box of them I would need like 15 to 20 to make like say just like a, a simple syrup out of it so I just got this off of Amazon uh, it's 100% lychee juice with pulp and no added sugar so I've actually had one of these off camera and they're fairly good I haven't actually had lychee juice before so I thought this would um, serve as a nice little uh, segue here or as a little bit of a mixer here to sort of add to the flavor of this cocktail um, to sort of describe the flavor of lychee juice it's like sort of vanilla-y, citrusy milk, if that makes any sense. So we have that, that sort of, um, it's very, very, very difficult to describe when in comparison to like say Western fruit. Um, I'll throw out maybe some, some words on here, but um, it, that, that strong flavor of like vanilla-ish sort of tangentially related flavor is there. So we're gonna throw that in as well. And then you're gonna need two ounces of sake. Now the, the whole thesis behind this drink is that, um, you know, Yusuke, um, Counter to Madarame actually has a, a decent appreciation for traditional Japanese art, right? Um, and you know, his, uh, his attitude and how he carries himself in the metaverse as well sort of reflects that. So, we're gonna do uh, about half an ounce of this stuff, and we're gonna have some of this off camera as well, because it is actually really good. And you see all the pulp in there as well. That should go very, very nice with the sake, the texture of the sake that I have. And then we're also going to have, um, this is just some, some uh, green tea syrup. So let's just take a look at this. Now what you, I guess you could also do here is uh, maybe use um, some ground up matcha, uh, which uh, I would do, except for the fact that uh, I don't like matcha and uh, I don't really have, I won't have any, any reason to use it outside of this video. I'm gonna do about the same portion of green tea syrup here. It's gonna have that like uh, that sort of earthy taste to it. 
I'll have to clean this out as well because, yeah, look at that. It's all gross and green. Um, and then we're also going to do just half an ounce of lemon juice. And two dashes of some orange bitters. So we're, we're supposed to have like this super uh, bittersweet sort of flavor here. Shake well, and then we're going to strain it into this martini glass, which we have here. Let's just stick that right there. Oh, it's just, oh, it looks like vomit. <laughs> oh, no. And actually, I forgot to put on the most ridiculous part of this whole thing. So, you know, Yusuke is an artist, right? Um, and uh, there's a sort of theme of vanity going on through Madarame's palace. So what we have here is uh, actually some some edible gold. <laughs> you might have saw, like, uh, some idiot on TikTok or whatever um, Want to like flex on on whoever the, on like whoever the hell ordered like a steak that's coated in like uh, like gold aluminum foil that was edible, uh, and actually you know I bought this off Amazon for like ten bucks, <laughs> so and they, they paid through the nose for that. So like, apparently this stuff is supposed to be super edible. It's actually super fragile as well. It's like already falling apart. So yeah, see. So let me, let me just let me just have a piece. I guess this this is so ridiculous. Um, It tastes like absolutely nothing. Oh, we can use it as a garnish, I guess, so that's fine. Um, <laughs> that was disappointing. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna try and just take this. It's already falling apart, it's so miserable. The second it touches your skin, it like immediately disintegrates. It's so weird. Let me just drizzle it all on the top here. All right, so here we go. We have the Goimon. Um, let me just give it a whiff here. It smells very sort of like sickly sweet. Um, I definitely smell the sake and the leche juice. Uh, well, let's just stop talking. I'll take a sip. Mmm. That's pretty good. All right. Okay, yeah, first, first things first, you get the coldness of the ice, obviously. And then you get sort of the, the tiny little nip of the sake, and then you get the, um, uh, the sort of uh, vanilla fruitiness of the lychee juice. And then you get the green tea, um, and everything else just follows through with that. It's just, that's, that's really, really good, actually. It's, it's, it's a very earthy cocktail. Um, maybe if you could, if you want to like say, quote unquote, westernize this, I guess, you could probably use some vermouth and make this into a, a sort of martini. Um, I know uh, martinis use like olive juice. Maybe you could actually use um, some green tea base here to sort of substitute uh, the olive juice that you put into it. Yeah, that's fairly good. It's actually kind of refreshing too, because we have the, the leche juice in there. I don't think it's gonna be the strongest cocktail. Or by strongest, I mean, the, uh, the most delicious one. But I, I could see someone really enjoying this. If you like martinis, I suggest you try this one out. Mm. <sighs> yeah. Add that one to the badger and I clean, clean glass club. Slightly clean glass club. <laughs> but all right, let's move on to the next one, shall we? Welcome to the museum of the master artist, Madarame. <laughs> Talk about bullshit clothes. First a king, now some kind of shogun. Unlike Yusuke, who has appreciation for the fine arts, Madarame only sees such things as a means to accrue wealth and status to himself, and only to himself. Um, he is the yin to Yusuke's yang, if you so please. One of the things that's so striking to me every single time I play Persona 5 is that um, Madarame is, of course, as we discussed previously, modeled after some venetatious shogun. Uh, the Emperor is clothed in gold, and his museum is extremely gaudy, uh, to the point of it almost being really obnoxious. It's gilded in gold everywhere, and Madarame himself is uh, wearing a golden yukata, um, I'm fairly certain. Madarame's Palace is also one of my favorites in the whole entire game. Uh, just everything from like the overly gaudy golden aesthetic of the palace to, um, you know, the track that plays while you're infiltrating the place. Um, a woman, I believe it's called, just really, really nice uh, backbeat sort of chill sort of thing to uh, listen to. And actually, I think during one of the refrains, uh, there's uh, instead of like, a, like a, a reverse bass being tracked, Along with it, it's actually just a photocopier sound, which is genius. I'll play it for you right now. It's actually super awesome.
pretty cool, huh? You learn something about Persona 5 every day. But uh, anyway, back to the drinks. So when I was thinking of a recipe for this drink, I knew that I had to include ingredients that would encapsulate the overly gaudy and venetious personality of Madarame. And for me, that obviously led to me grabbing a bottle of Goldschlager. Now, for those of you who aren't aware of what Goldschlager is, it's basically cinnamon-flavored schnapps with little flakes of gold floating inside of it. Uh, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that, but they are indeed in there. We're going to use this because why else would Madarame, what, what other cocktails could, or what other ingredients could Madarame possibly use within a drink that doesn't just include gold? So we're gonna use that, and um, and another thing to just throw in here that's sort of specific to the characterization of Madarame. Uh, I mentioned previously that Yusuke has a really really deep appreciation of traditional art, especially Japanese art. Madarame does not very clearly. He only sees art as a means to accrue status and fame to himself. So and then he also has a sort of adopted this sort of uh, pseudo. Uh, Japanese aesthetic, uh, traditional Japanese aesthetic, but without really truly understanding why this happens or why it's so significant. So I thought we would reflect the sort of fake authenticity or this fake persona that he's adopted as this uh, affable old man by not using the sake that we used for the uh, drink that we used for Yusuke. Instead, we're going to be using Yakaiken. Uh, I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, but point being, this sake isn't actually uh, made, produced, and bottled up in Japan. It's made in uh, California and specifically in my notes here. It's made in Folsom, California And uh, I've had some of this stuff and to be honest, it's odd and it's not all that great uh, It's clearly a cheap imitation of the real thing, but hey anything to save a few bucks I guess uh, and I cut corners and say Nihongo Jozu to all the gaijin who want a bottle of sake But can't really afford the good stuff So Goldschlager and Genkaiken are our main ingredients here that we're going to need to uh, of course chart this up with maybe some citrus flavors as well So let's get mixing shall we? Nice! I'm going to do uh, one and one half ounces of Goldschlager. We're also just going to do an ounce of our uh, absolutely 100% authentic Japanese sake, which is absolutely not real brewed in California. We're also going to put in a little bit of ginger syrup. This should go very, very nice with uh, the sweetness of the sake and the sweetness or the, the sort of uh, fireball-like qualities of the Goldschlager, right? The cinnamon sort of flavors. Oh. I guess if you wanted to like sort of highballify this, you could you could use something like say ginger beer, but um, maybe a little bit more fizzy. And then we're also going to add a little bit of lemon juice and one dash of Angostura bitters. And then of course, as always, cap it off, shake. Here we go. And a nice clear sort of greenish color. It looks a lot like. Um, Oh man, that, that cinnamon is very powerful. That's the first thing you got there. And then I, I think I smell a little bit of the ginger as well. But yeah, this can be a very cinnamon sort of drink. Here we go. That is a very... Might use a little bit too much of lemon juice. Otherwise, it's pretty good. really strong punch. I can't I can't single out what it is. Ginger is sort of mixed in with the the gold schlager there. Uh, to the point where I can't really nail it down. Uh, I will say however the lemon juice really complements this as well. Uh, I can't take I cannot taste the sake whatsoever. Um, and well frankly this stuff to me tastes exactly like vodka. It's a little bit more sweeter but yeah I would be able to taste the bite of that if it was uh if it was like say the vodka I have here but it's also not very well combined at the bottom, but it is, it's, it's getting a little bit cloudy. See, that's, that's the good part of the drink, because everything else up there, it was just the lemon juice and the ginger, uh, the ginger syrup. Once you get to the bottom of this, that's when it becomes really good. Mmm, 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 very cinnamon very ginger beer it or it tastes like ginger and, and cinnamon which is nice if you were to make this yourself i would suggest maybe having the portion of the of ginger syrup or maybe if you want to make this like a like a sort of a highball like maybe like a sort of carbonated fizzy drink maybe you could just top with ginger beer i think that might work out a little bit better than just using syrup and maybe substitute if you want the syrup or just something like simple syrup but yeah this isn't too bad yeah everything sort of sells to the bottom of the glass Whew.
that's pretty good. I don't think that's going to be a personal favorite of mine, but if I just so happen to fancy making one, I might. But uh, compared to all the other drinks that we have so far, it's not that interesting. Um, it's just it's just um, lemon, cinnamon, and, and ginger. Um, and those flavors do go, go together very, very well. But outside of that, eh, not so not so great. So that was the Shogun's Vanity. Uh, pretty decent drink so far. The flavor profile was very good, but it just doesn't stack up to, like, say, you know, the protagonist or the drink we made around on. It's like a solid 7.5 out of 10, I think. This is decent. Um, but yeah, uh, we're going to pack this one up here and then move on to the next drink. <laughs> Thanks, ma'am. All right, next drink, we're going to make a few different cocktails modeled after Persona's worst girl, Makoto Nijima. My rationale behind making this drink is that Makoto is characterized in Persona 5 as being this very sort of naive or socially naive uh, young girl, right? She doesn't really have any street smarts. She doesn't know what her, her uh, kids her age are into. So I want to go ahead and reflect a drink to reflect Makoto's naivete and shelter lifestyle in this manner. I believe that Makoto would absolutely walk into a bar and order something like a Shirley Temple because she thought that would be something her peers would be into. Uh, and when in reality, Shirley Temple would be something that your grandma would order, right? <laughs> Very old style sort of drink. I'm of the opinion of order whatever the fuck you want. But for the purpose of this video, this would be the drink that Makoto would probably order if she just walked into a bar. So normally what you would use this drink for, like the non-alcoholic version, is it would just be uh, a splash of, uh, just be a splash of grenadine, some ice in a cup, and uh, some Sprite to top. And then you would garnish it with the fruit of your choosing, be it with cherries or raspberries. And in the spirit of modeling this drink after Makoto, we're going to be doing something a little bit different here. So the spin on this uh, Makoto-centric Shirley Temple-esque thing that we're trying to do here is that instead of using Sprite to make a Shirley, or a Dirty Shirley, we're going to be using Fanta. Uh, for those of you who remember in Persona 5 Royal when they added Showtime attacks to the game, Ryuji and Makoto's Showtime attack, the last tick of damage that you inflict upon a shadow or a boss or whatever enemy that you happen to be attacking, involves Makoto crushing a can of uh, Fanta grapes or Manta grape soda because, you know, it has to be legally distinct and all that shit because Japan bottom text. What we're going to be doing here is just making a, a dirty Shirley but with some grape soda. Hopefully this will turn out okay because I can imagine this will be pretty nice. I'm going to enjoy this. So... Of course, uh, what you're going to need is obviously some vodka, some ice, uh, some grenadine, and we're going to go ahead and just garnish this drink with some raspberries. So, let's get started. So the first thing you do, of course, when you're making a Shirley Temple is, um, well, this isn't a drink that you shake, it's just something that you build in a glass. So we're just going to take some ice here, we're going to pack it in, and we're going to shake our measuring glass, and we're just going to add uh, two ounces of vodka half an ounce of our grenadine yeah all right so there you go already we have a nice little red color right and then of course fill it with sprite and then you have your dirty shirley but here we go crack open this now for some goddamn reason uh grape soda doesn't exist within my area i, I have no idea why i had to buy this off amazon and like ship it it was ungodly expensive for some reason a whole case of uh like fancy grape soda here Costing me, I want to say 15 bucks plus like maybe another like five or seven for shipping, which is absolutely ridiculous. But here we are. Hopefully this is worth it. And then we're just going to go ahead and just top it with grape soda. All right. Yeah, there you go. So it's almost layered. It's like, it's like a violet sort of color. All right. So here we have uh, what I'm going to now call the Seito Kaicho, <laughs> bottled after Makoto. So spin on a, a Dirty Shirley Temple with some grape soda and some grenadine. Nice and simple, but let's have a sip. Hmm, that's like, it doesn't taste like anything. Um, it, I mean, obviously you get the grape soda. But apart from that, that's about it. Yeah, if anything, I get the grenadine first and then the, the greatness of the soda. It's, um, it's... It, if you were going to give me a couple of these, these are actually kind of deadly because I don't taste the vodka at all. It's inoffensive, but it's not great. Grenadine and the Fanta actually combine to make something rather interesting. It's, it's a nice flavor, 
but I kind of want the burn of the vodka a little bit, I guess. If this was if this was something that Makoto would order, I guess it would be okay. Uh, it would be in line with her character arc, I guess. But outside of that, I guess I'm looking for something a bit more complex. I don't know. Maybe my expectations are a little bit too high. But uh, it, I mean, he says that as he's like finished half the drink. But well, I think that's about as much I can get out of that. Um, it's drinkable. It's not the first thing that I would probably order. Then again, surely I don't go into bars, or I don't imagine anyone else goes into bars and immediately sits down and says, "Hey." I want a Shirley Temple. It's inoffensive. I mean, if you want something drinkable um, and slightly dangerous, because again, I don't taste the vodka whatsoever, um, this is your drink. All right, well, we're going to move on to something a little bit more complex, I guess, speaking of that. And we're actually going ahead and model this, not after Makoto's uh, outside metaverse personality that she has, where she's sort of this, this meek sh uh, shelter girl, but we're going to model it after Queen, her persona that she adopts while on High School of the Phantom Thieves. So, Let's get into it. All right, next drink we're going to be modeling after Makoto's personality in the metaverse, that of Queen. Makoto's design in the metaverse is actually one of my favorites, and I think it's uh, one of my, my um, every Persona fan's favorite too, right? The contrast between Makoto's uh, soft-spoken and, like, I would say submissive personality uh, and, like, the, the fiery, uh, like, badass that she becomes as the Phantom Thieves advisor. I love that about Makoto's character design. Also, the bike, uh, the, her persona being a bike is really cool, too. I want to make a drink that sort of reflects that personality, right? The, that of uh, the contrast between Makoto's uh, fiery personality, uh, where she's just, like, a, uh, just a, a kid with um, immense uh, repressed anger issues. And this is the only time and place where she's able to express those very feelings. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to make something that I'm now going to Called the Fist of Justice. Keeping up with Makoto being this fiery, um, hot-blooded biker chick, we're going to make this into a shot. So what you're going to need to do is fill up um, a shaker with ice, which I've already done, and we're going to need one ounce of vodka, and then following that, we're actually going to put in one ounce of Aperol. This is supposed to be a bitter orange liqueur. Uh, now, this is supposed to be like an aperitif. This is something that you would eat, or not imbibe, let's say, after your, uh, your, your meal. So uh, let's just get this uncorked. So if anything, we should get um, like a nice sort of grapey, bitter orange flavor, which that actually sounds really nice right now. And then uh, we're also gonna put in another ounce of grape soda. So let's crack this in, uh, open again. And then we're gonna shake and then strain into this shot glass that I have here. We gotta be kind of careful here because we did add in a soda. Let's do this. So here we have the fist of justice. Let's see what this tastes like. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, it's very, ooh, ooh, oh, ooh, uh, ooh, I don't like that. Mm. Well, if Justice is supposed to be bitter and, well, sweet, that was it. The only thing that remains on my, on my tongue is the bitterness of the, uh, the Aperix here, the Aperol, uh, the bitter orange flavor. Um, you do get hints of the, of the grape soda, but all I really taste is just the bitter aftertaste of the Aperol. I'll tell you what, we're going for round two here. Hang on one second. It is tasty, right? The, the, the front flavor is very, very good, but then, oh, and you get to the, 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 the bitter orange flavor. It's just, oh my God, ah, oh, it's disgusting. I'm not a fan personally, but I could see where people would enjoy this. I could see where that would come from. Uh, the second one went down a little bit better, I think. It's pretty average. Um, well, that's kind of disappointing. Uh, I, I think I preferred the other, uh, the Shirley Temple-esque drink, um, the Sitha Kaicho over this one. But, um, oh, that's, that's kind of disappointing. If you could make this into a cocktail, I would assume it would be pretty good. Um, double of the portions. Apart from that, that's uh, it's pretty 8 out of 10. Solid, but wouldn't order it if I go to a bar. But anyway, let's move on to the next drink, shall we? Don't be ridiculous. You're not the one to decide such things. Of course, we can't just talk about one Nijima sister without talking about the older one, now can we? We're gonna make a drink designed to reflect a few things about Sai, including my favorite thing that never fails to send my sides into orbit whenever Sai slams the table in Persona 5. All jokes aside though, this drink is inspired by Sai's inner conflict and her struggle to balance her ambition and sense of justice as the latter slowly but surely gets corrupted over the course of the game, leading to, well, her palace being constructed. The idea behind this was, uh, we're just gonna make like a normal margarita and then uh, add a little bit something to it because whenever I think of um, someone ordering a margarita, 
it's like the most normal drink you could possibly ever order in the history of mankind. And Sai is sort of forced through a myriad of different circumstances uh, to be normal, I guess. She has to take care of Makoto, and she also has to worry about her own career and standing uh, to the point where she becomes obsessed with success. Uh, no matter what the consequences are for those actions anyway. So in order to make this drink a little bit more unique here, we're going to add uh, a little bit of uh, Sambuca to our drink here. Uh, now the idea of this is to just uh, accent um, uh, the margarita a little bit, make it a little bit more unique. Ideally this should add uh, notes of anise, uh, licorice, and some elderberry-like flavors. Uh, I'm not sure if that's going to be reflected here with this drink here, but we're going to try anyway. So the Sambuca here is going to try to represent the uh, sort of uh, latent desire for Sai to be a little bit more different in a society that doesn't value individualism whatsoever. So we're going to go ahead and just mix it all up together now. So I'm pretty sure everyone knows how to make a margarita, but we're going to run through it anyway. So in order to make this, you're going to need uh, two ounces of tequila, one ounce of lime juice, half an ounce of triple sec, and half an ounce of agave syrup. And then we're going to add, say, quarter an ounce and uh, or maybe an a half an ounce of Sambuca because, again, I've never had this. All right, so let's get mixing, shall we? Ice is in the cup. God, this is worse than the stopper list they put in, like, vodka. Why is this so... Oh, shit. There it goes. All over myself. All right, two ounces of tequila. And then half an ounce of lime juice. That's more like an ounce. And half an ounce of agave syrup. Now, I've never had Sambuca before, so let's just take a whiff for here real quick. Hopefully it doesn't spill all over again. Oh, that is a... That is an interesting... Sort of smell there. I'm gonna put in maybe like a third, possibly. And shake. All right. What was that? Oh, that smells very unique and different. Ooh, this is gonna be good. This sort of greenish tint to it. Yeah, that looks like a margarita, if I have seen one. I definitely taste the Sambuca. Um, I don't know. Well, I've had I've had margaritas before, so let's just let's just down the hatch. We'll describe it as if you know it was a little bit different. Let's see. That is very good. Wow. Okay. <laughs> um, ooh. Yeah, you definitely get you get the punch of the tequila, and then you get the sambuca. So yeah, so you get the punch of the tequila, and then you get the sambuca, and then you follow that up with a little bit of a orange flavor from the triple sack. Um, and then that's just really good. And then you get the, the punch of the lemon, too. Uh, oh, that's great. I don't know anyone who absolutely despises margaritas, but this is unique enough to where I would say if you have some sambuca lying around, or anything like, like elderberry liqueur or, the, or elderflower liqueur, give this a try. This might actually be worth it. Wow. <laughs> All right, so we're going to finish this, and then we're going to move on to the next drink. So let's get to it, shall we? Let's do this fair and square. All right, so the next drink we have here is called The Whim of Fate. And as you can imagine, it's uh, inspired by Shadow Sai's appearance. Um, now, I speak for many a Persona fan when I say that. I think Shadow Sai's appearance is probably the most interesting one in the entire game because of just the subtext behind it. It seems to be a theme with the Nijima sisters that their their uh, their outfits and uh, attitude within the metaverse is just so different uh, between you know reality and the metaverse. I mean, Makoto's a hot blooded biker chick, and Sai is effectively a uh, a flapper from the 1920s. Very very interesting to think about when we consider her character arc and uh, the amount of discrimination that she faces within her own. Uh, uh, career field just because she's a woman. It's a cognitive projection of a fully, truly an independent woman who's the sole proprietress of a, of a successful business, be that of a casino where she always wins. It's a stark contrast to how conservatively side dresses in reality, which is just a, what, a pantsuit, really? Uh, with a, a few little uh, feminine hints hin here and there, right? But it's not as overt as her wearing, like, uh, as what I would barely call a dress. She's had to live her life according to several, uh, uh, required rules and, and regulations about how she's supposed to act and behave as a professional woman when Sai in reality wants nothing to do with that as her uh, the shadow of her design uh, or as the design of her shadow would 
hint to us, right? There's a certain desire for Sai to be holistically free, and we're going to try and reflect that here with this next drink. As I mentioned previously, uh, Sai's palace is that of a casino. And if Sai is well and truly supposed to be this femme fatale independent woman-like figure, then one's mind would immediately connect uh, playing cards and booze to James Bond. And for me, that meant we have to make a spin on the Vesper Martini. So of course, what we need to do that is we're gonna need two ounces of gin, one ounce of vodka, one ounce of dry vermouth, one ounce of triple sec, or a quarter ounce of triple sec. And to put a little spin on this, we're going to use some sweet vermouth and some blackberry liqueur instead. Now, me personally, I despise gin with all of my heart, but I'm gonna do it for you guys. So if you like this video so far, make sure you smash that like button and that subscribe button. If you have your own comments, or uh, variations on this recipe, let me know down in the comments section down below. Or if you have any other ideas for any other drinks that I might want to try in the future. So let's get started, shall we? Ice! Oh, rip it to that ice cube. So uh, starting off, we're gonna add two ounces of our gin. A lot of gin. Now my experiences with gin are as follows. I made this sort of, uh, I think it was called the snowball for a Christmas party that I was basically just thrust in charge of being a bartender and stuff. It tasted exactly as you'd imagine, right? It tastes like pine needles, which and not that all not that all attractive to be honest um and from that day forward i swore off gin completely you want to make me a martini use vodka instead fuck that noise there's our vodka and gin and then just a little bit of triple sec here instead of using dry vermouth we're going to use sweet vermouth because well i actually prefer this over the dry stuff and then of course we have to add the blackberry liqueur quarter of an ounce of blackberry liqueur let's do this fair and square ah here we go. Smells a lot like the dry vermouth. It's got a nice amber color to it. Wow. Ooh, that looks really good. And of course, because this is indeed a martini, we're going to try and uh, just get a shave of lemon off there. Oh, there we go. It looks a lot like bourbon. Oh, I taste the lemon because uh, I, I did just cut that, but let's see. Ooh. Okay, so the first thing I think I got there was the taste of the sweet vermouth and then the blackberry liqueur. I don't taste the gin. Well, actually, yeah, there's the gin. I don't taste the vodka at all. But that is that is delicious. Um, now, I'm actually I'm thinking back on this. You know what I should have done? I should have picked, um, I should have got like a yellow flower to use for a garnish. I should have just stuck that in there, man. I'm so disappointed in myself, but this is a very good drink. Wow. Oh yeah, there's the gin. Okay. Oh man. Oh, that is that's so good. There was just spin in the Vesper Martini, ladies and gentlemen. That was the whim of fate, and it is absolutely divine. I recommend that you try this one. All right, let's finish this one off, and then we'll move on to the next one. <laughs> next drink we're going to be covering here is modeled after the team's otaku gremlin, uh, Futaba Sakura. Now, originally, what I wanted to do here with this drink, in retrospect, after uh, crafting a couple of these recipes, is um, Crafting something around uh, like sakura flavors, right? Recently, I became acquainted with sakura powder. Uh, well, sakura, to the best of my knowledge, um, means, well, flower in Japanese. And uh, I believe that uh, the latter half of Futaba's name also means something derivative of flower or springtime. This drink, we're, instead of just doing that, uh, we're going to lead a little bit into uh, Futaba being the team's resident otaku. And we're going to have a little bit of fighting with this drink now shall we so for this drink which will henceforth be called the gremlin model after futaba you're going to need uh one ounce of raspberry liqueur one ounce of blue curacao one ounce of lemon juice one ounce of simple syrup and uh some raspberries and lemon peels for garnish um but however that's we're not quite done yet with all these ingredients what we have here is our special ingredient we have a can of hard Mountain Dew here <laughs> because uh, gamers. Yeah, I've, I've actually had a few of these. Uh, They're absolutely terrible. Um, and I don't know what I was thinking of whenever they ran through my mind. Uh, they come in, uh, I got the variety pack here. So they, just the normal flavor of black cherry, uh, Baja Blast, and um, I think watermelon. We're just gonna go ahead and use black cherry because I think that I actually complement all these different flavors uh, to some degree or another. So. What we're gonna do here is just basically make a cocktail and then fill it up with ice uh, and the, the hard Mountain Dew. So without further ado, let's get started, shall we? So what we're gonna do is uh, we're not going to dry shake this, but we're going to instead try adding all the ingredients before because all my other drinks that I've made so far uh, were incredibly watery. So we're just gonna add an ounce of our blue curacao, ounce of our blackberry liqueur.
half an ounce of our simple syrup. I actually don't know if I really want to put this in because it's, it's going to be pretty sweet already, but we're going to try it out. Now we're going to add some ice. We're going to strain it into this heart or this glass, and then we're going to top it with some hard mountain. Oh, that's a nice, like, gross blue flavor. It looks like a, a, like a blue raspberry slurpee or something. We strain into a highball glass filled with ice. I'm gonna put too much ice in because we obviously wanna fit as much Mountain Dew in there as we can. That might be a little bit too much, actually. Oh, this is gonna be disgusting. It looks like a, a cotton candy sort of thing. I'm gonna wait for that head to subside. Yeah, so we have a, we actually have a nice little gravity thing going on here where the ice is actually suspending the Mountain Dew above the Blue Cura stuff. Uh, I did make a drink in the last video uh, of the series where we did the exact same thing with like, um, we made like a, a rainbow drink in like a skull glass uh, themed around uh, Tally's tattoo from Mass Effect. So go check that out. But yeah, the, the Blue Cura so is, uh, is denser than everything else that we put into here. Just to make this look a little bit more interesting, we're just going to garnish with some raspberries. All right, and then, yeah, there we go. Garnish with some... Not so fresh raspberries. My mat's all sticky now. All right, so here is the gremlin, modeled after personifies resident gremlin Futaba Sakura. Here we go. Mm. I only take the I only taste the hard Mountain Dew. Oh well, I'll just show you how, how fresh the raspberries. Actually, that's not too bad. Um, huh. Oh wait, there's there's the there's the the spirits. Hang on, one second. One more one more deep drink. Yeah, the Mountain Dew and the and the blackberry liqueur sort of overpower the blue curacao and the lemon juice. I don't even taste anything like that. This tastes like. Well, frankly, it tastes like a blue raspberry uh, icy. If you guys ever went to like a 7-Eleven or something and, ha you know, just took one of those. It tastes exactly like that. Oh, yeah, there's a spirit. Yeah, okay, so we have the slight citrusy flavors of the blue curacao, the flavor of the blackberries, and then we have the, the, the most forward front flavor is actually the Mountain Dew itself. Um, I don't taste the lemon juice or the simple syrup whatsoever because of how density works you actually get the blue curacao towards the bottom of the glass as opposed to, well, everything else sort of sitting at the top. I didn't actually mean to layer it that way, but it's, it's this is really good. Um, it's really sweet, um, like overly sweet, like um, theme park candy sort of sweet. It tastes like Italian ice almost, just like the syrup that you put in the Italian ice. Yeah, well that, that, should, that should tell you everything you need to know about that. It's good if you really like sweet and sugary stuff, right? If you have like an absurd sweet tooth, this would be good for you. But otherwise, I'd say we'd call this one a success. We're gonna finish this and then we're gonna move on to the next one because this is actually really good. Konnichiwa. All right, and for our next drink, I ask that if you haven't uh, fully completed or finished Persona 5 Royal, including the third semester, the additional content that, well, was included within the Royal edition of the game, I ask that you skip ahead and maybe pass these two drinks as well, or just skip to the end to see the result. Frankly, these are spoilers, and I'm going to be talking about these two characters um, in depth uh, as far as uh, as far as you know making a cocktail around them goes. So if you don't want to be spoiled, skip ahead to the results part of this drink, or to the next drink, or to the drink after that, because uh, we're gonna be modeling this particular drink after Kasumi Yoshizawa. Kasumi as like an individual person, not uh, the person that Maruki. Uh, basically brainwashes Sumire into being. My first impression of Kasumi is that she's kind of a dick. <laughs> that, that's that was like my first impression um, whenever we actually get to find out about the real circumstances behind why Sumire acts and behaves up the way that she does is because her sister is a, a over competitive dick to her little sister um, to the point where it really seems like she's just being insensitive to Sumire's plights, especially if we consider that Sumire likely has um, uh, depression, like really, really bad depression, like chronic depression. This is also going to be a notion that I'm going to go ahead and uh, relay as well whenever I get around to the video, uh, the analytical video essay as part of Dichotomy of a Character Season 2, where I am going to go ahead and cover Kasumi and Sumire uh, in the same video. So we're going to go ahead and try and reflect uh, Sumire's status as a star athlete compared to 
uh, her willowy sister here. So this is going to be called the Rising Star. As with all the other drinks that we have so far, ice! And we're gonna add two ounces of peach schnapps. I've never actually had peach schnapps before, so let's just give it a whiff. Oh, that's, that's a nice flavor. That's gonna be a very, very nice addition to this drink. You're gonna want an ounce of cranberry juice. So we're gonna have a, a fruity, cranberry-ish cocktail here. That's gonna be a pretty nice flavor, I think. Then we're also going to have uh, the same amount, one ounce of some orange juice. Okay. And then uh, same amount of uh, simple syrup. I'm not really sure if I really wanna do this because it's already sweet enough. So maybe we'll just do like, and we'll do half an ounce of simple syrup. Half an ounce of simple syrup, I think should do it. This drink is already gonna be sweet enough. Oh, that's a nice, mm, that's, a, that's a pretty good smell there. And strain it into there. And just to make this drink uh, that much more appealing, we're just gonna uh, shave off a bit of uh, some orange peels in here. So we'll bring that out. Mm. That is a very nice, sweet, and affable flavor. It's the peach schnapps, and then the orange juice, and then the cranberry. Um, now, what I really should have done here is uh, strain out the pulp for the orange juice because that's that's actually kind of making me feel a little bit sick. Uh, that is very good. Uh, the peach schnapps compliments is like the first thing you taste with everything, and then all the other citrusy flavors follow. Oh, that's great. That is a fucking winner, guys. That is great. That was the rising star, and you guys need to have one if you just happen to have all these ingredients lying around. So go ahead, go nuts. And uh, we're gonna move on to the next drink featuring Kasumi's willowy younger sister, uh, Sumire. So let's get started. Shall we? So now that we talked about one Yoshizawa's sister, we might as well talk about the one that still exists within reality, uh, within the real, true reality that Marky has not concocted up for the rest of the Phantom Thieves and the rest of the world. So this cocktail is going to be modeled after a few things for uh, for Sumire as opposed to Kasumi, right? The last drink was labeled the Rising Star, and Sumire uh, has lived a life wherein she's lived within her older sister's shadow for basically her entire life, and we're gonna make a drink that reflects that and her resolve to do better by her sister's memory as well. So this one is going to be called the Dreamy Violet. And as you can probably imagine, uh, we're gonna use some creme de violet, uh, some blackberry liqueur, uh, some lemon juice, some club soda, and we're going to garnish it with some raspberries. Now for those of you who actually have played Persona 5, um, Violet is Sumeria's code name when she eventually does get into the final palace with us uh, with the rest of the party. Now I'm a little bit skeptical about using the creme de violet because I've heard it actually just tastes like soap. Um, so, I, I don't know, this is going to be a new experience for both you and I. So of course, again, smash that like button and uh, comment down below what do you guys think about this drink and all the other ones that i made so far. So here's what you're going to need. You're going to need two ounces of our blackberry liqueur, uh, one ounce creme de violet, and one ounce of fresh lemon juice, and we're going to shake well and strain into a glass. Uh, in this case, I think I'm going to use a martini glass. And uh, then we're just going to add a couple raspberries for garnish, because um, whenever you think of Sumire, right, right, her key character design uh, and Kasumi's character design is the ribbon that she wears on the back of her head. So the raspberries here are going to just simplify that. Hopefully look something like uh, Sumire uh, in the metaverse, uh, Violet in the metaverse. All right, so let's get started, shall we? So as always, ice! Ice. Start with our two ounces of our liqueur. Creme de Violet. I'm just going to take a whiff of this stuff because never, I've never had this before. And my hands are all wet from the ice. All right, there we go. Oh yeah, that actually does just smell like soap. Oh no! Oh fuck, this is a bad idea. <laughs> Alright, well, fine, we, we made it this far. Oh, that is a very nice purple color too. And then just a little bit of lemon juice. Alright, so it sh this should taste strongly like blackberry and soap. I don't know. I'm very skeptical about this. It actually just does smell like lavender soap. Alright. Oh, that, that, that does not smell pleasant. Mm. We got a nice dark purple color though, so that's cool. Okay. There we go. We have the Dreamy Violet. That's not bad. 
Um, you get some floral flavors from the creme de violet, uh, but the, the blackberry is a front forward flavor. Um, let's see. That is a very, it's a, it's a good flavor. It's very interesting. Somewhat earthy and floral flavored from the creme de violet. Uh, the blackberries complements that very, very nicely. And I think I, I detect a hint of lemon juice in there as well. That is an interesting flavor. Um, I kind of like that. It's an easy sipper. Yeah, so we have, we have the nice little sort of um, uh, violet flavor, man. That's, that's, that's pretty good. I like this. This is very good, actually. Well, that was, um, that was interesting. Um, hmm. I wonder what happens if I would remake that with the, um, with Eco Portions Lemon Juice Violet, uh, liqueur and, uh, the Blackberry liqueur. I wonder if I get something different because I just taste the Blackberry. Um, if you guys want to try this out for yourself at home, uh, and if you're successful in maybe mixing up the portions a little bit more, uh, please do let me know down in the comment section because I think that'd be quite interesting to try out. But, as it stands right now, I think this is a winner. So we're gonna move on right on to the next one. Why is it that I get a shiver of excitement whenever the shadows plead for their lives? Wasn't that graceful? All right, so the next drink we have here, we're gonna be model it after everyone's favorite floofy sadist, Haru Okumura. Now, Haru's thief outfit to me has always been kind of interesting because, well, it's a musketeer outfit. What's also really interesting is that she calls herself Noir. That's her code name uh, as part of the Phantom Thieves. And she also says something along the lines of, well, I know I'm kind of operating outside the law here, um, but what I know what I'm doing is just. And I always found that kind of interesting. And as well as Haru's outfit being something that, uh, the period that it's taken inspiration from being something that French men would wear during that time period, which, um, uh, I, I, the name, the specific name is forgetting me. I know I mentioned this in one of my Dichotomy of a Character episodes, uh, where I did cover Haru. I think it was in the opening part of my Odds of Comedy video, so, again, if you guys want to go check that out, feel free. Link's down in the description, but, um, I forget the specific French name for it, but it was, a, it was a very, very brief period of French fashion where everyone just went all out. Uh, everyone was just dapper and as beautiful as shit. This sort of reflects Haru's, uh, position within the plot as well, right? She's the sole heiress to a massive corporate conglomerate, of which, after you complete the Okumura Palace, she is now saddled with dealing with the, with the fallout uh, of that of the events that follow with that. And also, following that, what I also find interesting about Haru's character is that she takes interest in, well, traditionally masculine hobbies as well, like Makoto does. She likes slasher movies, she likes horror movies, um, and the way she dresses in the metaverse, um, if her image of spirit and power uh, was that of, say, tr something traditionally more westernly feminine, right? So dresses, corsets, flowers, stuff like that, then her persona, uh, Melody, would not have, well, a bunch of guns under her dress. So th that's something I've always found really, really cool about Haru's character, right? She wants to try and trump these traditional gender roles that are expected for her to conform to within Japanese society. So we're gonna go ahead and try and make a drink that sort of captures the essence of Haru, right? So I think like Joker, this one's gonna require some coffee. So we have some Kahlua, and uh, some Baileys, and we also have, in this mug here, we have some espresso. Uh, same espresso that I used, I just used uh, Lavazza beans uh, that I wore off Amazon. Um, it's a very, very sort of dark roast, um, which should complement the sweetness of the Kahlua and the Baileys to great effect here. And uh, of course, because this is an alcoholic cocktail, we're gonna top it with some vodka. And the reason why we're making this another coffee drink is, uh, well, Haru's ultimate goal here, uh, at least in the third semester as far as I can remember, is that she wants to, um, open a small coffee shop, right? She's very proficient in growing vegetables. Um, and then uh, after she fully takes control of her father's business, she wants to go ahead and try and make uh, a coffee chain. But like, not like that makes like really shitty coffee, but like uh, like boutique coffee here. So we're gonna go ahead and try and reflect that here. With the so this is going to be called the Cheerful Sadist. And those who are familiar with how Haru acts in the metaverse uh, are probably gonna be familiar with why this drink is called like that. Uh, she's been quoted as, uh, getting a thrill every single time she takes out a shadow, which is, uh, kind of scary. And also on Valentine's Day, uh, if you cheat on her with one of the other, uh, female members of the Phantom Thieves or one of uh, Joker's female confidants, um, she tried, she's like really trying to like not rip Joker apart, which is kind of hilarious. So we're gonna go ahead and call this drink the Cheerful Sadist in the spirit of that. And we're gonna make it a coffee drink as well. So, let's get started. Ice! So we need one ounce of vodka. One ounce of Bailey's Irish Cream. 
I do love me some Baileys. Uh, same ounce of Kahlua. I'm gonna do one ounce of Bailey's Kahlua and of our espresso as well. So let's just get that all in there and then shake it up. Because while Haru is a kind of an aristocrat, a rogue one at that, which is also something I find interesting about a character, we're gonna serve this in a martini glass. So let's get started here. Shake! And we should have just a nice coffee drink here. So here we are. The Cheerful Sadist. <sighs> yep. Uh, that is actually just an espresso martini. Um, but what can I do to make this a bit more unique? Uh, this is just fine by itself. It's just a coffee milkshake. But just to make this a bit more spicy here, we're just going to add a little bit of Sambuca. Because this is just, this is a little bit boring. Yo, Badger, why are you just making espresso martini? Shut up. Just a little over an ounce of Sambuca. That should give it a nice little, little licorice flavor. Whoop. Mm. Yep, that's better. Very, very rich and unique flavor there. Um, coffee complements it really, really well. Um, maybe it was a little, bit, a little bit too much, but you still have the, the sweetness of the Baileys and the Kahlua to sort of wash it all down. That pairs really, really well with the Sambuca and well, obviously there's the espresso in there as well, and you don't, you barely taste the vodka because, well, of course, you already have uh, the Baileys and the Kahlua in there, so of course you're not going to taste the vodka, but the Simbuca in here was a really good decision. Totally fine, just an espresso martini. Um, but this, this adds something a little bit more unique to it that I don't think you would get otherwise. So maybe I could have added some, uh, some creme de violet. Uh, that would have made the drink a little bit more interesting. Uh, sort of reflect on um, Haru's, like, uh, sort of flowering and floofy personality, if you will, uh, but beneath the surface, she's actually a bit more violent. That was the cheerful sadist. Pretty good. It's up there. It's not my favorites that we tried so far, but it is up there. All right, let's keep it rolling here. Next drink. All right, now we're going to get into the more interesting drinks here as part of this video. So we're going to model a couple drinks here after Gordo Akechi. There's so many facets of his personality that we need to cover, right? We need to cover his false affable persona, uh, his true, like, psychopathic, murderous self. And then we need to also just reflect on that a little bit more and then come up with something a little bit more wholesome, right? Um, I'm pretty sure the persona community would tear me apart if I don't do that. But anyway, we're going to get going here. Now, obviously, we need to make a few drinks that reflect both of Akechi's personas here, uh, Robin Hood and Loki. Obviously, this lends us a few notions that we can work with while crafting a drink specifically for Akechi. Now, what I'm going to call the Robin Hood Respite needs to be a nice, easy, affable drink that would be someone in line with Akechi's false persona that he cultivates, the Prince Detective persona that he's painstakingly crafted to, well, be as affable as it is, uh, as likable as he is. Robin Hood embodies Akechi's desire to be a hero and to do what is right on his own terms. It stems from a personal yet absurd grudge, uh, is what Akechi sort of defines that as. So this drink is supposed to symbolize Akechi's uh, inner desire to be a force for good, or whatever good Akechi would define for himself, uh, as he struggled with his own inner demons. So here's what it came up with. We're gonna need an uh, ounce and a half of gin, one ounce blackberry liqueur, half an ounce of lime juice, uh, half an ounce of uh, honey syrup, and we're gonna need two ounces of orange bitters here. So, let's get mixing, shall we? Now I reiterate once again that I despise gin with all of my being. Okay, so, ounce and a half of Let me just throw the rest in there. Finally, I don't have to use this bottle anymore. Holy shit. And one ounce of blackberry liqueur. We're going to need uh, just a little bit, just like a half an ounce of honey syrup, as I said earlier. But we're just going to estimate here. I'm not going to uh, sticky up the measuring cup. I'm not going to sticky up. I have the measuring cup here, so we're just going to put a little dollop in here. What I would assume be half an ounce. All right. And then, of course, Akechi with his Detective Prince persona, before we actually find out what he's really like, is supposed to be this um, well-meaning, well-to-do sort of, um, well affable person. He's very, supposed to be sort of likable, right? What we're gonna do is just serve this in a martini glass to sort of reflect that. And hopefully, I have a feeling this is gonna be a good one. That's like pink. Interesting. So here we have the Robin Hood's Respite. Let's go. Mmm. 
Ooh. Ooh, that's a very unique flavor. It's uniquely bitter. Hold on, I don't know how to describe that. Yeah, so obviously you get the gin first, and then everything else sort of goes with that. Follows down that, that sort of path. Yeah, so first you get the taste of the gin, and then shortly after you get the taste of the blackberry, and then the honey, and I'm sure you get the bitters in there somewhere. Could it be? This is the only drink that I've actually sort of tolerated gin. It's a very, very gin-forward flavored drink. Um, and you kind of taste uh, all the ingredients afterwards. And there's the lime juice. That's pretty good, actually. I, I enjoy this. Not the greatest, not completely offensive either. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna go finish this up and then move on to the next drink, which is going to be modeled after I catch his other persona, his true, more violent and psychopathic self, um, themed after uh, then after that version of Akechi and, well, Loki as well. So let's get started, shall we? Damn it, he's lost it. Here comes! <laughs> Die! The trash of society. All right, now for the next drink, we're gonna be calling this one the Psychotic Breakdown. And of course, it's modeled after Akechi's true persona, that of being, well, rather unhinged um, in the metaverse as this uh, sort of... Uh, anti-hero that the game really wants to try and characterize Akechi as, which is something that I do agree with. If he is supposed to be Joker's complete opposite, right, Yaldabaoth's champion uh, of the kind of change and rule that Yaldabaoth wants to enforce within society, um, then yeah, Akechi would be that, that person within the metaverse, that um, sort of anti-hero who just goes around killing people indiscriminately instead of actually causing any kind of real uh, change that has consequences other than just, you know, chaos and murder and mayhem. So we're going to try and make a drink that captures that unhinged attitude of Akechi's true persona and include uh, Loki's sort of persona design in here as well as best as I can. And now, one thing about Loki's um, design that has always sort of caught my attention is the horns. The horns that are coming out of uh, uh, Loki's face are actually supposed to be uh, like parasites. They're based off of mind controlling parasites that you see in snails. Um, which those of you who have actually watched Chainsaw Man would have seen that in the OP as Makima uh, tries to feed uh, Denji that exact same snail. Basically what happens is the, uh, the snail or the parasite takes control of the snail's nervous system or brain and has it climb to a high place and then basically uh, it, it pulsates as if it was like a caterpillar so birds will eat it and then it spreads through that sort of vector to other snails. I think it actually tells us a lot about Akechi's sort of uh, bloodthirsty mentality towards people like, say, Joker or um, Messiah Shido. If these things are supposed to be like a core part of his character design, and in, in fact, they, they completely conceal Loki's true eyes right behind the horns, then that kind of tells us a lot about how much, uh, how dedicated Akechi is to bringing Shido to justice. And by justice, I mean just straight up killing him. He sees no other viable options other than just being, well, strung along for the rest of his life by everyone else, including greater society, to the point where he feels like it's necessary to just kill everyone in his path that disagrees with him, including that of the Phantom Thieves. So we're going to try and reflect that sort of unhinged nature that is Akechi's persona within this drink. Uh, we need, so we need a drink that sort of uh, captures this complex combination of uh, uh, personality traits that uh, Akechi has, along with uh, Loki's depicted in the game as well. Uh, we need a drink that reflects Loki's uh, dual nature as a trickster and a bringer of change through abject chaos. So what we're going to need here is we're going to need some Campari, some dark rum, uh, some blue curacao, some lime juice, and some simple syrup. And the portions for that are as follows. We're going to need a uh, half an ounce of dark rum, half an ounce of blue curacao, half an ounce of lime juice, quarter ounce of simple syrup, quarter ounce of Campari, and two dashes of orange bitter. Shake it up and then strain into this glass, which I got off of uh, Forgotten Weapons' merch store because, well, frankly, it looked cool, and they were doing a sort of... Um, going out of business sort of uh, uh, sale for one of the storefronts. And I mean, it's a it's a whiskey glass with a bullet inside of it. I mean, what else can, what else do you want? All right, so without further ado, let's get mixing. As always, ice! An ounce and a half of dark rum. It's gonna be a very sort of rum forward drink. Half an ounce of blue curacao. I've never actually had Campari before. A quarter ounce of that ounce, but that's fine. Two dashes of our bitters. I don't know what I think about that. That's a, that's a weird flavor. 
a blue, like a sort of dark purplish black blue flavor. What we got there. Yeah, take a look at that. Huh. I just smells like a it smells like a cup of booze. All right, so here we have the psychotic breakdown inspired by Akechi's true persona. Down the hatch. Oh, ugh, mmm, ah, uh, fuck, that's gonna, oh, it's gonna make me, uh, oh, god, it's gonna give me a psychotic breakdown, fuck, man, that is disgusting, I think it's just the, the, the Campari that's just ruined it. Yeah, you get a nice sort of, uh, like a little bit of, of like the, the rum, and like the, all the refreshing flavors first. Like the blue curacao, uh, the simple syrup, uh, and then of course the rum. But then you're just left with the bitter aftertaste of the of the Campari, and it's like, ugh. It's just it's just bitter nonsense. I guess if you like bitter stuff, this would be down your your alley or whatever the hell. But this this is not great. If the the whole entire uh, thing behind this cocktail is you want to give someone a psychotic breakdown, then yeah, this this would be it. That sucked. Um, we're gonna move on to the next one here, uh, which we're going to call the Harrowwood's Last Stand. So let's forget about all this nonsense and let's just move on, shall we? as the eye can see. We're going to make something called Harrowward's Last Stand, uh, which is modeled after a catchy's persona that you get on the last day of, well, the game, basically, in Persona 5. Uh, right before you go fight Maruki and you accept uh, that you're going to fight for the true reality, not the false one that Maruki has concocted up for the rest of the Phantom Thieves. Um, and it's really, really kind of interesting, as a side note, how the game sort of props up Akechi, of all people, as the center of moral righteousness around what Joker should and shouldn't do within that situation. They set out the antagonist of the game, or one of the, the uh, tertiary antagonists of the game, as the center of moral righteousness in this situation. Which, it's just really, really fun to wrap my head around. And the, the best part is, is that it actually kind of works. Um, to great effect. It doesn't kind of work, it actually does. Every single time I, I go back and play through Persona 5, that moment always hits me because it's either Betray Akechi's Witches, which the, the plot has somehow made me sympathize with Akechi to that degree where I don't want to actually just betray his wishes and effectively kill him, or accept the false reality and betray Akechi and the rest of the team's wishes for a brighter uh, future, and a future that they can manifest with their own uh, willpower and design. The design of Harrowward, as far as Akechi's persona goes within the game, uh, he's a sort of fusion between Loki and Robin Hood, right? Sort of superhero-ish uh, design of Robin Hood and the darkness of uh, Loki. We're going to sort of fuse all that together into a sort of surprisingly sort of uh, bittersweet sort of drink here. So uh, for, for these drinks to sort of make this sort of um, uh, bittersweet drink here that I'm now going to call the Harrowward's Last Stand because, well, that seems to be a fitting name for uh, what we're modeling uh, this drink after and for what Akechi uh, does uh, for what you have to do within the plot of Persona 5 in order to unlock uh, Harrowward for Akechi to use in the final boss of the game. To sort of capture this sort of bittersweet moment we have with Akechi, where it's not about like the justice of what society considers to be just or not, it's incredibly personal as well uh, for Akechi, which is always super fun to think about too. I have no idea how Atlas managed to sort of twist and, and stretch Akechi's character to make me sort of sympathize with him, but it works and I don't know why. Maybe we'll go ahead and uh, we'll talk about that more in the video where uh, I eventually do cover Akechi as well. I got I got quite a bit to say to him. So if you guys are looking forward to that, hit that subscribe button and uh, check the link in the description for all the other videos as part of that series as well. And if you haven't liked or commented already, please do so. Uh, it helps you know that I'm doing something right here with these sorts of fun videos that I like to do as a little, sort of little side quest in the content that I already upload. So uh, anyway, without further ado here. So what you're going to need to create a Harrowards Last Stand is uh, have ounce and a half of um, uh, rye whiskey, one ounce of sweet vermouth, half an ounce of uh, Aperix Aperitivo, and uh, to further bitter this whole thing, we're going to include two uh, dashes of uh, uh, aromatic bitters here. So, let's get started. Before I get into any of that, ice! So, 
Uh, for our whiskey here, we're going to use uh, some Bullet Rye whiskey. Uh, the recipe that I didn't make uh, does call for some kind of rye whiskey, but um, I would suppose do whatever the hell you want here. Doesn't have to be all specific. Yeah, we're gonna have the, the whiskey be a very, very sort of forward flavor in this drink, I suspect, because of how the portion's working. Following that, we'll take our sweet vermouth. So this should give the, the drink a sort of uh, sweet olive flavor, which should be kind of interesting. We'll just do half an ounce. Shake, and then strain. A nice sort of amber color to it. Oh, all right, well. I can already taste the orange, or smell the orange bitters. There's the whiskey. Oh, this is, this is gonna suck. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very whiskey forward. I don't smell anything else, but we'll, we're probably gonna taste the the uh, the orange stuff, uh, the the apex uh, as we go down. And I'm I'm just delaying here, so fuck it, down the hatch. Here we go. Oh. 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 Hmm. Huh. Yeah, you get the the undertones of the orange flavors in there from the from the apricot. Oh, and there's the bitterness. But the the whiskey sort of saves it from being too oppressive. That flavor from being a little bit too powerful there. If bittersweet was the goal, then bittersweet that we got. That is fucking fantastic. You just Barely get the taste of the sweet vermouth in there uh, amidst the, the 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 bite of the whiskey and uh, the bite of the uh, the bitters and the uh, the the apricot. Oh man, wow! That is that is the bittersweet cocktail of dreams, bro. Harrowards Last Stand gets a fat W. That is great, fan fucking tastic. As it stands right now, the bullet rhyme front facing flavor and then everything else just sort of neatly follows behind. It's a very, very balanced drink. Nothing, no other flavor is too oppressive. It's just the right amount of stuff. All right, so with this W in the bag, we're gonna move on to our last drink of the video, and it's gonna be modeled after someone a little bit special. His apparel just... I believe you called forth your power like this. Persona. All right. Well, here we are, guys. The last cocktail of this whole video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching so far. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and let me know down in the comment section if you guys happen to ever make these drinks. And, well, tell me how much you enjoyed them or what changes I could possibly make, maybe for a second video in the future as well. But uh, as it stands right now, we're going to make something that I'm going to call the ideal and the real. And as you might expect, it's going to be modeled after Persona 5's sympathetic antagonist. We're going to be modeling this drink after Persona 5's Takto Maruki. Maruki, for me, is probably one of the most unique antagonists in gaming history, to my recollection. Um, he's so consumed in, uh, by his, his past trauma. Uh, of his girlfriend uh, basically getting drawn into a catatonic state because of some immense trauma that caused basically her family to get killed during a burglary that Maruki sees fit to create a reality using his persona Azathoth as a way to concoct a false reality where suffering just plainly just doesn't exist anymore. Um, now that very notion has always fascinated me about Persona 5 because Maruki's way of treating these sorts of things is just him taking the Phantom Thieves ideology to its logical extreme. It, it begs certain questions about the, the uh, philosophy of the Phantom Thieves as well, and uh, what the wrong sorts of people could do with that sort of power. Pain uh, can't exist anymore. Suffering cannot exist within his reality anymore. Everyone must be happy and content all the time with their current circumstances. That is something that we're going to try and reflect here within this drink. Uh, the false reality that Maruki has tried to concoct it and cram the entirety of the world into as well. The idea of this drink, it's supposed to be sort of a warm, comforting hug, right? That uh, it's, it's the ideal that Maruki wants to impose upon the rest of society with the reality that he wants to um, concoct for everyone, uh, where again, suffering just doesn't exist. We're, this is sort of modeled after a hot toddy, right? So this drink is supposed to be a sort of warm hug that Maruki wants to give to the rest of reality, being a benevolent overlord uh, that he fancies himself to be. 
And uh, of course, this is gonna require a cameo from a very, very famous person. Look, check this out. Oh my God, it's pick me <laughs> Yeah, so we have uh, um, a kettle of hot water here. And uh, the ingredients that we're going to be using here is, of course, um, some bourbon, uh, some uh, ginger syrup, some honey syrup, and some uh, lemon juice. And we're also gonna cut up this lime here to uh, garnish and wedge as we see fit. As for the particular whiskey that I'm going to be using, uh, we're gonna be using blackened whiskey here. Uh, I have used this earlier in the other episode where we did make some uh, cocktails themed around Mass Effect. But to sum it up, this is Metallica's brand of whiskey that they released, I think, a year or so ago. Basically what they do is they take a, a normal batch of whiskey, brew it up, uh, store it in some oak barrels, and they blast their soundtrack into it. Now, this is supposed to enhance the whiskey in some way or another, However, I don't get that impression whatsoever. To me, it just tastes like really sort of watered down Jameson. It has that sort of vanilla oaky flavor to it, but apart from that, not really anything too significant here. But uh, we're just gonna use that because we did just use the bullet rye for the other recipe involving a catchy, and I just kind of want to vary things up a little bit. Use your bourbon or whiskey of choice, of course. I probably would have used Jameson if I did have some on hand, but yeah, uh, do what you want is my point. So let's get started here. Uh, so to make the ideal and the real, you're going to need two ounces of bourbon or whiskey, one ounce of honey syrup, uh, three quarter ounce of lemon juice, half an ounce of ginger liqueur or uh, ginger syrup. Now, of course, I don't have ginger liqueur, so I'm going to be using the ginger syrup that we used for our last drink. And we're going to need uh, three, to quarter, three to four ashes of Angostura bitters here and uh, some hot water, which we have here, the courtesy of Pick Me. And finally, we're just going to garnish it with a lemon wheel. So. Let's get started, shall we? Now, we're supposed to be serving this in a mug, but uh, for the sake of uh, this video, we're just gonna be serving it in a normal uh, cocktail glass here, just so you guys can see what I'm working with here and you know, I'm not bullshitting. So, two ounces of our blackened whiskey. I'm a little bit less concerned about uh, the honey syrup here, uh, sort of coagulating a little bit. So, uh, because we are just gonna pour hot water over this. And use the, the rest of this. Break it off a bit. Stir that up. Lemon well, wheel out of it. That said, we're gonna pour in our hot water, and maybe we'll give it a little bit of a stir with a knife as well. Here we have the ideal and the real. It's got that nice little lemon. It's a nice aesthetic. So again, very sort of uh, yellow colored mixture here. Let me give it a whiff. Yeah, that's um, tastes like, or smells, and probably is going to taste like just hot whiskey. But uh, here we go. Oh, that is divine. That's very good. Surprisingly, the lemon juice is the first thing that you get there. You get the honey, and uh, the lemon juice first, and then you get the hot water, and then you get the, the sort of uh, bite of the whiskey there. Oh man, that is that is absolutely heavenly. Yeah, so it's exactly as I, as I wanted this drink to be. It, it tastes exactly just like a nice, warm hug. So it's aligned with the goals that I wanted for this drink, and it tastes good to boot. That is so good. Ah, huh. unfortunately, that's the end of our cocktails here. For this particular video and uh, before I say anything else I want to thank you all for watching this has been just a, a little bit of a slight detour here from our normal content and if you guys did enjoy this make sure you smash the like button and the subscribe button as well and leave a comment down below uh, maybe there's some uh, potential for some other recipes here that I didn't quite include here within this video but anyway guys this has been X Badger X and I want to thank you all for watching this rather strange detour into something a little bit different that I normally don't do on this channel if you have any recipes for something that I might want to try in the future for another potential cocktail video, uh, let me know down in the comment section down below. And of course, don't be afraid to smash the like and subscribe button at, while you're at it. Um, stay posted on everything that I do upload, because we might do something a little bit more fun in the future uh, in regards to this. And of course, you have that dichotomy of a character episode involving Makoto. We're going to take an in-depth look at her character in the future here as well. So do stay posted for that. And uh, well, Thank you guys for sort of indulging me on this adventure that we had so far involving Persona 5 themed cocktail. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. I'm out of here, and goodbye.